the smoke start coming. What you're looking for. Got a while to go yet. And while all this fun is happening underneath, you need to be seasoning uh, the top. Little more salt. You can go ahead and be very generous with your salt and pepper. But mostly your salt. It really helps to put a nice crust on both sides of your roast. You know, you can use the same idea with steaks. You've got some really good steaks and you wonder why they never come out right. Well, it's usually because you're not searing them. And I would say you're not flavoring them enough and getting them hot enough on one side. And you do uh, be so well heated, and I'm sure you've heard this many times, but it's just the truth. Um, so that I will know when that side is done, when it's ready to release on its own. All right, I just used up all my Italian seasoning, so I'm going to run over to my cabinet and write this down so that uh, I'll have that at the grocery store. I actually want to say Excuse me, I'm going to set it up here because I just may have some more up there that I'm going to use. This is some onion powder. Just good old, I guess, oldie. Yeah. And I'm going to sprinkle that on top as well. And I did have this uh, McCormick to grill mates. Have you ever seen this? This is really pretty good stuff. Just anything that you have in your cabinet. Just keep in mind that it is the searing effect that you're going for. Now I'm going to put a little olive oil on it so that it kind of helps keep the seasoning down so it doesn't fly all over the place. I did not do that to the first side because it was already oil heated in my pan. I did turn it down just a smidge. Just take a peek. Oh yeah, that is a nice and brown. Back, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. Okay, I want to get a peek. Alright, I just turned it over. I promise you I won't be off camera this whole video. It's just, just bear with me for this morning. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful crispiness. That is the flavor, friends. If you do not capture that flavor with the seasonings in your meat, you will not be happy with the end product. I'm just, I'm just telling it like it is. Ooh, I love that sound. All right, so right now in my crock pot are those very thickly sliced onion rings. That's what you want. That's your bed, if you will, that um, your nice seared meat is going to lay on. Now, I have, was blessed enough to have some beautiful uh, Cabernet Sauvignon left over from Christmas. And I'm going to use that beautiful red wine. You bet I am. And I'm going to pour it gently in the bottom because so I, I don't want to disturb the onions. But this is going to flavor up from the bottom and all the way through your meat. Just put as much as you want in there. I mean, it really doesn't matter. And it's going to also penetrate the gravy that we're going to put in there. I'm going to go ahead and put my beautiful big piece of meat right on the onions. See how it's sitting right on there? Look at the beautiful sear. And the sear is on both sides, I promise. Now, there's a little bit of stuff in here left over, and you bet I'm going to pour it right over. Because why not? That's flavor, flavor, and then more flavor. Very good. So that's what he's looking right, like right now. All right, and I think over here what I have, I'll show you. Uh, some other things that I pulled out, I think I showed you. I love to have Worcestershire sauce. I don't even measure, guys. I, I don't. I'm, let's say about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I don't know if I'm saying it even right, but I don't care. You know what I mean. 
A1 sauce. A1 sauce is like the best sauce in the world, I think. has to, adds just enough sweetness to it, but not too much. And besides, if you go to a great steakhouse, um, you know it's always on the table. People just want it because, well, the reason is they want it is because it's good. All right, this is a little bit of uh, crushed up garlic. I'm going to put a good amount on there because why not? I do have garlic powder on there. But I'm going to go ahead and put this on top too. Why not? Just throw all your goodies right on top here. And then, oh, I do have these carrots, and I was gonna throw these carrots in as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Not sure I need them all, but let's try and get them down in the well. Down in there, you don't need to cover them up, and we can fix this up later. I like to go ahead and cook as many as I can because if I'm gonna use this for two nights, or even three nights for us, because I don't expect any company. Um, you never know around here. So let's go. We'll just tuck them down in there. Okay, now, if you're wondering, well, that looks a little dry. I'm not sure that that's gonna work. Well, if you look over here, I just took one of these simple little Aldi packets of brown gravy mix. It just takes your mix plus about a half a cup, uh, excuse me, a cup of nice cold water, and it mixes together beautiful. No lumps, no nothing. And guess where that's going? It's going right over the carrots first. Carrots first. And then the rest of it can just go right over the sauce. <clears throat> and that's gonna go down. That is, does that just not look like a picture? It looks so beautiful. Now later on, I'll check on it in a few hours. If for any reason I think it looks dry or whatever, and I seriously doubt that this is going to at this point, but if it does, I will open up a can of mushroom soup and just pour that right over the top. So there we go. I'm gonna put the top on it, just right over here. I've already had it set to high, so it is ready to go. And yes, I do set my crock pot on high. When I know something is gonna be uh, sitting for quite some time, and this is. So I'm gonna set it on high for about three hours. I'll set my timer. And I'll come back and check on it. And if it's bubbling away and looking really good, I'll put it back down on low and we'll see what happens after that. All right, thanks. I will be back, I promise. I have just been cleaning out my refrigerator and my cabinets, uh, pantry, otherwise known as pantries, okay? Uh, and I just found a few things that I have kind of left over from all the baking extravaganza that I did. And I know many of you did the same thing. So you might have a half a bag of this, a half a bag of that, two or three of these, four of those, you know, so on and so on. Um, so we try to be a little bit creative with what maybe we can do instead of just kind of pitching it out and don't put it, well, if you're like really responsible with your freezer and you have like a little note clipped somewhere of what you might have down in that freezer or up in your freezer right here in your own uh, kitchen, just always know what you have because it can get out of hand really, really quickly. And the next time you go to check on your freezer, you'll see things and you'll wonder what they are. <laughs> so if you put, in other words, if you put things in your freezer with the intentions of using them, use them within the next two to three months. All right, I'm gonna show you what's going on here. I'm just gonna pick it up real quick. Doesn't that look just yummy? I think that looks really good. I could tell the gravy is gonna get nice and thick. I'll leave that lid on nice and tight. It's still on high. It's been a couple hours. Um, yeah, so um, let's go ahead and put, I'm gonna put some kind of a pie together. I've got one little lonely can of pumpkin left. I've got one can of evaporated milk and you know what that means. I've got a bag back there of uh, vanilla wafers. I have a half a bag of vanilla cake mix. I don't even know why, but there it is, okay. And I thought I might exchange the sugar that is called for in the uh, pumpkin 
to my monk fruit. We'll give it a try. I use it in my apple pies and it comes out all the time. And I've got some pumpkin pie spice over here. I'm gonna run over there and get some salt. I've also got some eggs back there. Um, and I'm gonna use that today too. I've, I just wanted to show you all quickly my sweet little um, Christmas gift that I got from my kids. I just think it's so adorable. It says my name up there. And then of course, Super at 60. Of course, because I am. <laughs> Well, I'm that for sure. <laughs> I don't know about the other part, but hey, you know, you can figure that out. Uh, proud American. I love that flag. I try to wear it whenever I can. All right, so let's go into the kitchen. Let's get it done. Need a third cup of sugar. Two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. My butter got a little warm, so I'm just letting it calm down a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna just give this a quick mix. I'm just gonna go ahead and put one half teaspoon of salt right over the top. Just spread it gently right over the top. Okay. Swiss switch to my whisk. All right. It's very easy to put together. I mean, this it's not, it's pumpkin pie, basically. It's just you can use your regular pumpkin pie. If you have a favorite great-grandmother's uh, pumpkin pie recipe, feel free to go ahead and use this. Whatever, this is just a whatever day. Whatever you have lying around or left over from your holiday celebrations, that's where we're kind of using it up today. And you may have a totally different set of things in, before you, but this is what I'm using today. And honestly, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. It's a whole 15 ounce can of pumpkin that we're gonna go ahead and add. Another 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Okay, just happen to have two, one of each of these cans left, just one. However, when I go back to the grocery store, I will uh, make sure that, hopefully I'll be able to get it, uh, another can of pumpkin or a couple of them and a couple cans of evaporated milk not because we love pumpkin pie. And quite honestly, over the whole holiday, you saw a lot of the stuff I made on a lot of my videos, but I never made a pumpkin pie. I've, here's a secret. I never told anybody, I don't tell anybody, but I've never even made a pumpkin pie. I haven't. I've made crusts, I know how to make a crust. This is going to be a Nilla wafer crust just because I have them left over. For me, it's kind of experimental. So I'm glad you're here. All right, everything is getting nice. And with that, and I don't think I need to add anything else. So let's move this guy aside. I'm gonna bring on my pie pan. This is kind of a deep dish pie pan. I have ones, maybe, no, this is, I would say this is a deep dish. Let's see, it's a Pyrex. Um, oops, it doesn't say deep dish or not, you know, so whatever. It's what I'm using today. All right, here's all that I have left. There it goes. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of that melted butter and I'm gonna save a little bit too. All right, and I'm just gonna just use this real quick. Okay, and I'm just gonna mix it up nice. So everything gets covered in butter. Uh, sometimes when you're working with a graham cracker crust, they do, uh, the recipes usually call for a little bit of extra sugar, but you know the taste of these mellow wafers. They're just the best in the world. Um, my little grandson, he absolutely loves them. And um, so I'm not, they're just so yummy. They don't need any added sugar. So, oops, sorry. So we're not putting it in there. 
but all right so there we go we're gonna press the crumb down it doesn't look perfect but that's okay all right here's our filling it's kind of thin I guess that's the way it's supposed to look I don't know I just followed the recipe on the Aldi can so I'm sure it'll be just fine oh, I am really making a mess of that bag anyway here's the crumb crust Sorry for that shadow. Yeah, I'll try and scoop the rest of that out of there. All right, now one more thing that I wanted to add, simply because I had it, I, I have it. Um, now I have made, and I know you have too, those pumpkin crunch cakes or pies or bars or whatever you wanna call them. Um, and maybe that's what this is, maybe I used, half a package of this and then didn't finish it off or something. I don't know. Anyway, this is a little area that I'm not quite sure of, but we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna sprinkle some of this over the top. Remember, this is just leftover cake mix. See what happens. I'm kind of excited about it. I like doing stuff like this, whoops. I'd like to try and use it all up if I possibly can. You know what, I'm just gonna go for it. We'll see it out it's not quite a full um a full package as you can see just spread it out here and i'm definitely going to put like a pie a cookie sheet underneath this just in case we have spillage all right and i think the last couple things that they ask for for that particular uh dessert is butter and I have just a little bit left here. It's not a whole lot. Let's go ahead and see what we got. If I have to melt a little bit more, I, I can. I'd rather not. I'd rather just use what I have. Hmm, I'm not sure that's gonna be enough. I might have to add a little bit more. All right, hold on. All right, went ahead and just got a little bit more butter, maybe two, maybe three tablespoons more. I just felt that this was enough here where it just needed a little bit more butter. Okay, and you know, <laughs> I probably could use more, but hey, we're gonna go with it. Let me just give it a little swirl. Not too much, but just, just enough. I kind of would like to get everything coated up in there. There's a lot of butter welling up over there. Let's fix you up. But I don't wanna mix it up so much that there's no kind of crumbly crust on top. So let's hope I haven't destroyed it totally. But we'll see what happens. All right, and the last thing that I wanted to add because I have a half a bag almost of walnuts left. Um, do you guys use a lot of walnuts in your holiday baking? There are the people who love walnuts or nuts in general and people who just hate nuts. My kids hated nuts for years. And if I made things with nuts in them, I'd get like sour faces or I would, you know, their dessert would be gone and what was left over on the plate would be, you know, four or five little picked out nuts, <laughs> which is fine because I love nuts. But anyway, for a while there, for many years, I just kind of learned not to make things with nuts in it, unless it was just specifically for me. Okay, so here we go. I'm trying to think, boy, if I had like a leftover bag of cranberries or dried cranberries maybe I'd even have added them to the pumpkin mix but I didn't have any left over I do have some I just don't want to open up any new bags of anything you know what I mean all right that's it that's our pie let's call it a <clears throat> middle wafer holiday pumpkin gum cake pie okay
you ever find yourself passing through the produce department and seeing beautiful heads of broccoli and just pass on by because maybe you just don't know what to do with it. So tonight we are going to have, um, I don't know, what would you call it? Like grilled broccoli or pan broccoli? I'm putting it in the oven, okay? I'm sh putting it on a sheet pan. We'll call it sheet pan broccoli. All right, we're gonna put a little uh, butter and a little salt and pepper and maybe a little garlic salt um, or maybe some fresh garlic. I don't know. Here it is. You just lay it out, break it all up. I'm gonna let it sit on this nice clean um, drying towel that I have and I'll come over and give it a turnover every once in a while because I like it to be really dry. And then I'll uh, prepare my sheet pan and we'll have all that ready to go in just about the time the pot roast is done um, and hopefully that pie will cool down. I do have a bag of potatoes that I never used up. So I never... Hello Brownie. Did you hear chopping going on? Mm -hmm. You want a potato? Do you want a little potato? Have you been a good girl today? Hmm? Have you been good? Oh no. What do you think? Take it nice. Look at her shaking. <laughs> She's so excited she's shaking. Take it nice. Nice. Good girl. Yeah. Bye. See you later. Pretty good. Now we like we like potatoes. Anything that'll crunch, that's what we eat. Silly girl. All right, um, just wanted to give you a nice little look here at the pie. Look at this, it's just beautiful. It's not moving or anything, so I think it's gonna be perfectly done. Let me check, can we see anything from underneath? Ooh, we can see a nice buttery brown crust. That's good news. Let me just move you right over here and show you what I'm kind of planning to put together. Here is the broccoli that I cut up and washed just a little bit ago. I went ahead and put it on my pan. I put it on um, not one of those sill pats because it gets so greasy. If you're going to be putting something really greasy, really oily on a sheet pan, take your sill pats off first because I find them really difficult uh, if you want to try and get any kind of oil off them. So I take them off and I just use aluminum foil or parchment paper or something, whatever your need is. All right, I'm going to uh, add some olive oil really, really well. And I'll get my hands in there and mix it all up when I'm done. Some salt and some pepper, a little bit of chopped garlic, some Italian seasoning, some garlic granules, as well as the garlic, fresh garlic, a little bit of herb de Provence. I don't have a whole lot of that left, but I'm gonna use what I have left and try and find that again because I love it. And then, guys, I got this out because um, so many people talk about it and I bought it a while back and as you can see, it's not really well used. To tell you the truth, I'm not crazy about it. I just don't like it. As soon as I put it on something like a piece of chicken or whatever, it's the first, it's such a strong flavor for me anyway that I, I just don't like it. So I'm gonna nix it. I'm just gonna put it aside over here and just, uh, I'll keep it just in case I could use it for something that comes along, but not, I doubt it. And over here, what I'm gonna add to my broccoli, because I did wanna have some kind of potato or something, and I did have a couple of potatoes left over, so I'm gonna chop them up too. Now, I'm not sure about the timing on the broccoli, so I did cut my potatoes a little bit smaller. So I have a feeling it's gonna come out just right. Not sure what I'm, I'll probably set it for about 30 minutes to start with. Um, we'll see. But I'm going, I'm going to go ahead, see if I can get this. Oh, probably not. It is kind of heavy, I will. I will say it's kind of heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and dump these onto, um, I know, I'm just determined to do this. Aren't I? <laughs> hey, I haven't made a terrible mess yet today. Not yet, that is. All right, just pull them all out here. You could probably, if you had some extra carrots, chop them up real fine and throw those in. Although no, you're right, because you're probably thinking, well, you put carrots in the roast and there they are. Yep. Yeah,
look what I get to have. Yep, Lou and I are gonna have this tonight in just a few minutes. Here's our gravy. I left it on high, and I'm gonna let that thicken up just a little bit. Okay, leave the top on. Here's the meat. It did really, really come out very, very um, tender and just perfect. You can see, you can see it on the edge of the fork there. You know what I'm talking about. And you can see the nice brownness all over the place here. That's from that beautiful searing that we added early on. Carrots are just perfect, just fork tender. They're not mushy and gross. They're just perfect. And then right under here, which is really my, my surprise of the day, because I wasn't sure what was gonna happen, but look at that. It's like a veggie picture. It's perfect. Uh, I put it in the oven for, hmm, yes, about 30 minutes, and the potatoes were not done. They just they just weren't done, and they have to be done, um, obviously. But look how nice and brown they are on the edges there. They look, oh, that looks so delicious. All those wonderful seasonings we put all over. I think you will enjoy these. I did cover them with another sheet of aluminum because the potatoes were not quite cooked all the way through. Uh, I put them back in the oven for 15 more minutes and then they came out just perfectly. Then I squeezed on a half of a lemon and uh, I think that's gonna be absolutely delicious. I have a little bit of coleslaw, Southwest uh, coleslaw from the other night that we're gonna serve. And right now, dinner's ready. Mm -hmm.